I am excited to come to your house today. I have a powerful message to you today. You are watching Born to Conquer Life. Hallelujah. And I believe that by the end of today's broadcast, you'll be powerfully blessed. I want to say a word of greeting to all my partners and all that have been supporting this ministry since its inception. I pray that God, who had begun a work in us and in you, will bring it to completion to the glory of his name. In Jesus' name. I have a very powerful message for you today, and I believe that you shall be blessed. And I, I believe that um, uh, last week we were able to bring to you about certain, you know, revelations. Today, the topic is breaking the cycles of failure to success. Breaking free from the cycles of failure to success. I'm going to take my text from the book of Luke, chapter 5. I'm going to read it from verse 1 to 10, but because of time, I'm going to uh, pick it on verse 5 and 6. The book of Luke, chapter 5, 5 and 6. Let me read it from 4. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answered, said unto him, Master, we toil all the night and have taken nothing. I want you to take note of that. Master, we toil, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. Father God, I just thank you. I release myself to the power of your word. The flower faded, the grass withered. Your word abide forever. Lord, ride upon your word today. Let everyone that are watching me, wherever they are, using their mobile phone or their TV or wherever you are, you are in the global world, I pray that the word of God will come like a mighty rushing wind and it will touch you where you are in the name of Jesus. I sprinkle the blood of Jesus over nations and over kingdoms and over lives and over every home and everyone that are watching me right now, I come to you by the token of the blood of Jesus and I pray that the word of God will find effect in your life today. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody shout a loud in there. So the topic is breaking free from the cycles of failure to sources. Hallelujah. The first thing I want to quickly uh, remind everyone that are watching me right now is that anything outside, outside of Christ is subject to failure. I want you to take note of that. But in Christ, there is no failure. But anything that is outside of Christ is subject to fail. Hallelujah. That is the first thing first that I want for you who am I listening today to know that there is no failure in God. The God who engrafted you here, who brought you here, hallelujah, had already predetermined your success, your victory. He has spoken a word into your life. Hallelujah. That word cannot change his covenant. He never break. So whatever it is that God has spoken concerning your life, concerning your destiny, concerning your marital destiny, financial destiny, and every department of your life, even to, to eternity, my God, it is it is bound to come to pass because God lifted up his word above his name and when he promised you, he will surely bring it to pass in Jesus' name. So I want to, I want to remind you that, that God promises is yes and amen and he never changed by whatever it is going on in our economy, whatever it is going on in, the, in, the, in, in, in any, any economy, the word of God will always stand out and never fail in Jesus' name. I, I just want to quickly, you know, you know uh, open up to you uh, some of the things that I quickly want to remind you uh, before I actually get into the center of this message to, to let you understand that in Christ there is no failure. I remember a man called Thomas, Thomas Edison who actually invented the bulb 
that we have that is bringing light. This man, possibly by the special grace of God, was predetermined, hallelujah, was ordained and anointed to bring this type of invention to our world. And he tried 909 times and he never succeeded until the last moment, one more time, and he was able to bring about what God has already predetermined, hallelujah, to come to pass in his life. Uh, sometimes when we see as failure because of all kinds of competitive jealousy and all kinds of attack and all kinds of things going on around us, does not allow us to wait to see to the end of the promises of God in the areas of invention, in the areas of the calling, in your marital life, in your business. Sometimes we lack endurance. We can't stay to the Lord. We can't even have this sheer determination to, to complete a course and a race. We literally are wanting to give up. So when I'm talking about these cycles of failure to a cycle of success, Hallelujah. I'm saying that in the areas of cycles of failure, that people have to, when we look at the world cycles there, I see it as a pattern. I see it as a circumference of where you are. I see it as your belief system. I see you as what you do. Hallelujah. I see nothing getting his heart. So is it. So I, I see it as your mindset that brought you to a level of not being able to be productive because God never created failure. When God created us, he sees that we are very good. So what he put in your verse today as a human being was to be productive, so be fruitful, multiply, so do, have dominion. It's something that's supposed to be productive. So if it is not productive, something is wrong with our mindset, with our perception, with the way we do things, with the way we, with the, our perception matters. Hallelujah. So I want to change that pattern today, and I want to introduce you, and my God, to this central message today, breaking free from the circles of failure to success. And I've come to announce to some of you, maybe you're in your, in your business, and it's like things are downsizing itself, and you're tired, and you're about to give up. As I want to speak to some people who you, you married and you are facing some turbulence in your marriage and you want to wash the net and give up. Some of, some of you, you are tired. You've been to college. You've got a, a certificate. You've been applying for jobs. You've been trying all you can to want to succeed. It's like nothing is coming out of it. It's like your life is going through some kind of successions of break or failure. But I don't want you to see yourself as a failure. The only reason why things can fail is because, number one, anything outside of Christ is subject to fail or possibly you develop a wrong mindset and patterns that is making you to go through the motions of life, go through the circles of life to the point that God is to me when I, when, when, when I'm when about this topic today uh, so concerning the fact that how people go round in cycle. Number one, they started a journey and they were still supposed to be productive in their journey, but along the way, energy was dissipated because they were doing the wrong thing, they have a wrong mindset, they could not complete the course, so they came back all the way from the sacrifice of these cycles to where they started from, and nothing productive that can be seen in their life. Nothing productive every year is end up to be the same. I pray that God is taking you out of these cycles today, and I'm representing to you today a new cycle of success that will launch you into the next breaking and both seeking breakthrough today in Jesus' name. Now, I, I, I want to go into the teaching to say that uh, Peter, because I came to speak to those people who are doing something, who, who are already working on their talent, who are already working on their gift. The pushing for those people who are doing nothing is for another day. And those who are not doing anything, you need to learn from today's teaching. You can't be the one that was given a wrong talent and bury it. You have to be part of the group of people who are multiplying that, their talent. Hallelujah. There. So, Peter was not a failure. Peter started well. Peter uses the gift that he had. 
Peter was an entrepreneur. He went on a fishing expedition. He's doing something. Hallelujah. He has his, his three things ready there. Everything was well packed. But behind the three things, he has his styling right. He has his team right. And he has his tools right. Somebody say in Nigeria, I come from the Riverland era. I, I was born when I'm living on top of the water. I know how to cast fish. And we know at the right time when we have to go out to cast the fish. It's always in the middle of the night. When everybody has slept, the fish they will come out. So he has his, his time right. He has his tool right. This man, got, you know, has net. It's not going with a hook because who can only catch one fish at a time, but he went with, a, with nets, the nets that will be spread, and also has the net that could be run up to 200 meters. However, for any fish that want to pass through that passage, they will encounter the net. So he set the tools right. The tools was right. All the equipment that we need him to succeed, he has it. And number three, he has his team Right. They say that this. They are all part and he has partners who are he, he, he put everything together, but there's one thing that is missing in his life. Some of you are watching it today and you have done everything right. You struggle through life. You are going through the motions of only not being the same. You started a business, it's not being productive. Maybe something is missing there. Maybe you have not surrendered your life to Christ. Maybe you have not surrendered your business to Christ. Maybe you have not totally surrendered the part that is not working to Christ. Because anything in Christ, there is no failure. Anything outside of Christ is subject to fail. Are you listening? Listen to me, everyone that is watching me around the globe. I want you to know that the promises of God is yes and amen. Hallelujah. And when God said, this is who you are, when you respond to who you are, you are bound to be productive. Because God never fails in his promises. Hallelujah. Now, because it is not working. So they surrender the boat to Christ because Christ beckoned on them. Can I use your boat? And as God is beckoning on everyone, under the sound of my voice, if Christ is not in your life, you haven't got the spiritual energy to deal with the burdens of life that we are facing in this end time. The life is burdensome. There are labels in life. I know a whole lot of people love your labor, but labor means that you are mechanical. Labor means that you are struggling. Labor means that you are working, you know, you know, you know, you are dissipating your energy, doing certain job that is not productive. In this age of innovation, in this age of invention, people are not innovating, people are no longer inventing, people are just into labor. When you come into the level of innovative idea, we are talking about using a mental energy. There are times when we feel the physical has to go into mental, hallelujah, energy, hallelujah. When you begin to innovate, when you begin to invent certain things, it's not common anymore. Most know now, innovation is what is happening because we are building on what had already been invented. People are not inventing anything, but they are innovating. Even, even, even innovation is not bad in itself. Hallelujah. Because we are working on the premise and the platform that has already been set. Now, for everyone that are going to succeed and be free from the burdens of, of labels and all of the things we are going through, there has to be a sustainable power. There has to be a deliverer. There has to be something that is powerful beyond the level of what you cannot handle. Hallelujah. See, and see, when the Israelites are to come out of their bondage, God has to send a deliverer in the name of Moses, who is equipped and powerful enough to take them out of their burden under Israel, under Egypt, under Pharaoh, to their Canaan, the land that is full of meat and honey, is their destination. Because God has already predestined that the land of destination is the land that is full of milk and honey. There was a revelation from the beginning of time where God is taking them. God doesn't just wait for you 
to relent and be humble, be burdensome. Hallelujah. God wants to take you to a place of victory, a place of success. Hallelujah. And, and I come to announce to you today that there's promises of God upon your life. So don't see yourself as a failure if you are in Christ. I, I want to say this again. Because, because what people regarded as a failure today, that's why I gave you the practical uh, secular man called Thomas Edison, who invented our bulb, who never succeeded up to 999 times. He was trying to put all the stuff together until 1,000 times. And he was able to invent the bulb. And the reason why a whole lot of people fail, because failure is a mindset. It's a mindset of a person who said, I'm fed up and I'm giving up. I'm fed up of this marriage. It's no longer working. I'm giving up. I'm fed up of this business. I'm giving up. Failure happens when you give up. So at the brink of wanting to give up, and this passage that we read, Jesus Christ came to Peter. He said, well, since you are giving up and the boat is available, give us your boat. Let's use it for kingdom purpose. Of course, Peter gave it up because it's not working. He gave it up to the right person. In fact, Peter had favor among all of the contemporaries to be singled out to be the one that Christ could beckon on to use his boat. Like any of you today who will give your life to Christ and submit areas that is not working unto God, and God will begin to walk in those areas you thought was weak. Because when you are weak, he became very strong and active. Hallelujah. So Peter gave up things that are not working. Initially, he was washing his nets, wanting to give up because he said, I toil all night and never catch any fish. Have you ever been there before where you toil all night in your relationship, in your business, in your ministry? I, I, feel, I feel sorry for a whole lot of pastors. But we don't have to feel sorry for anybody. But when you see the pains that they have to go through, to be a fisher of man is not easy. Hallelujah. Some minister can stay 10 years, 20 years, 30 years before their church begins to grow. And some of the people that don't understand the burdensome and the labor well, I won't say body on my label because number one, a minister that is called and responded to the visions and the call of God must be satisfied with that calling. It is because we are making competition, we are looking at other people who are on the, on the fast track or maybe God has made them to be blessed already. We have to stay put whatever happened. And this is what our, we as a pastor, a minister of the gospel, this is why we are not telling the congregation. We are not making reference to the right people in the Bible for, people, for them to understand however, that giving up is not a choice. Now, Cedric, Mesach, and Abednego knew that they are going into the fiery furnace. He said, if you do make up noise that you put us there, no matter what happened, we will not bow. There are some people who don't care what the result is, what they believe is what they believe, and they stood for what they believe, and that is productive and not they stood there because that is their calling, that is their mission, that is what God called them to be, that is the man of God wants for them to be, and that is the kind of business God wants for, wants for them to do, that is the kind of mission that God wants for you to do. You don't have to give up because when you give up, it becomes failure on your part because you have not you have not been able to complete the process. Hallelujah. We are not running a rat race. So we are not in competition. We are going to know, yes, Jesus Christ look up and he saw crowd. There are times and, 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 and time is coming when your crowd will come in your season. So don't give up. Maybe you're married to a husband that hasn't got much or he's not working and you want to talk down and then look down at him and you want to wash your neck and move away. You need to step out there. If God has revealed from the beginning, you need to step out. The problem is that who told you that this is yours? And if it's God that is telling you it is yours, you need to step out there and fight any battle that want to range in that area. Somebody say amen there. 
Hallelujah. I don't know why I'm going there, but, but it's all right for me to go through that measure because you threw that, you know, measure because a whole lot of people are not properly putting the definition of what is called free law. So the Lord somebody is doing something and it's not, it's, it's not working for them. They want to give up. They want to pack it up. Because number one, they haven't got the patient. They haven't got the character. They, they, their mindset was wrong over what they are doing. And that is why they want to give up. You cannot give up on things when you know that it is God who asks you to do what you do. I told you, I have no choice. Where, where, as far as the currents of God is concerned, I'm not accountable to anybody for my sources. The world is my sources. The world is my increase. Whatever happens in the ministry, as much as I respond to the call and I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, I'm okay. Somebody say, oh my dear, so if you are not okay, then plan B will be an option for you. And we are not ready to go to plan B. We are here, we are here to make account to the world who we have to stand. <laughs> the world who we have to stand. We are not to make account on them. Somebody say, oh but I'm not giving up. Somebody say, oh I say, don't give up. I don't know what you are going through. Maybe you went through universities and you've been applying for a job. And you, you, you know that that is the calling. That is, that is your choice. And that is what you feel that God wants for you to do. Maybe an accountant or a lawyer or what it is you have been trying. It's like it's not working. Put your effort. Do like Thomas Edison. Who has to step in there until success begins to manifest itself. Don't do that. With sheer determination, complete your race. Somebody shout in there. Hallelujah. Now, let me go to this text. So, Peter gave up what is not working and gave it to Christ. I believe that Jesus Christ was teaching in that boat. And after when he complete, completed his teaching, he gave Peter a prophetic direction as to when to launch. Hallelujah. You won't have been going through all kinds of stuff. If you are in Christ, God will give you a prophetic direction. You will be led of the Lord. It's the paracletion that came to guide you to all truth. Hallelujah. If you have him in your life in due season, he will direct your course. Don't give up. Somebody say, I come to speak to somebody here. Don't give up. Don't be quickly or easily deceived. Don't be quickly and easily give up on what God has called you to do. It is because you are working in competitive je jealousy. That is the reason why you are, you, you are, you are, you, you, you are just, you know, being, uh, you know, burdensome. Hallelujah. Don't be burdensome. I want you to put your trust in the one that calls you, the one that you are responding to. I want you to be faithful to the invention. Be faithful to the innovative idea. Be faithful to the cause of God that he gave you. Hallelujah. And you will see that God will come true in the end. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. So my advice to you today is not to give up easily. Hallelujah. You see, because whatever it is that is coming from the Lord knows no failure. That's why you have to change your mindset. That is why you have to do things differently. Let me come to the spiritual dimensions of this topic today. Hallelujah. And let you understand that uh, life is full of struggles and life is so burdensome. When you give your life to Christ, it brings upon your life an inputted energy or righteousness or grace, the whole power of Christ. Grace is packaged in grace coming into your life to do things that you cannot otherwise do by your strength. Most of the time we are doing things by our own strength. We are not. Even though we preach the message of grace, righteousness, and all of those things that we mention, part of us is still attached. We still want to do things in our own way. When Jesus Christ asked Peter to launch into the deep, he, he, he has a way of coming through that I know a lazy man. I'm a very hard-working person. I have toiled all night. I have done everything that needed to be done. I dress for success. I, I speak success language. I took success step. I, I embark on project. I'm not sleeping and I'm doing stuff. Though. So don't tell me that I have not tried. 
Even some ministers sometimes when they are tired and their congregation is trying to wear them out, they say, look, when I was in the secular world, I am earning so and so amount of money. Don't look at me to be somebody that don't know nothing. I have I've lived my life. In fact, some people go to the extent that I was so so and so. I was this and I was that. Because when things are not working, that is why we start using certain defensive, you know, statements to want to really, you know, make people understand, to prove to people. I don't have nothing to prove to anybody, and I'm not ready to please nobody. I am what you see, and I don't have anything extra to make you happy. Somebody say, oh, my dear, I cannot act upon your own mind, upon your own thought, upon your own school, school of thought. You know, as a definition of success, my success is in Christ, is the one that called me, I'm contented, I'm happy with how I am. Hallelujah. You need to know that because if you are not contented with how you are and who you are, then people will push you to do what you don't supposed to do. And in the end, when you are doing account, then you'll be found wanting because God will say, I didn't call you to do this, I didn't call you to do this, this is what I called you to do. You only give account to what he has called you to do. Don't be distracted by people who are just moving around. Who are just who are just. I don't want to use any type of you know you know. I don't want to use any word <laughs> or on people today. Hallelujah. But we have a whole lot of people that want to drive you mad. Mad. They want to drive you crazy in their own craziness, in their own madness. They want to drive you crazy and drive you mad. Mad. You need to sustain yourself. You need to have self control. Somebody say you know, that your life is to please him who calls you and be faithful to him to the end in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So you, you are watching it today and you feel that everything is all right. Your tools are ready. You have the time. You have the, the, the tools. We have the, the right, right team, the CBDs. You have everything all together. You know what Jesus Christ told Nicodemus? He said, yes, you have everything all together, but there's one thing you need to do. You need to be born again. Hallelujah. You see, you see, you see, you need to be born again. God also told that man that want to prove that he obeyed the Ten Commandments and he was living right. He said, one thing you never do. There is one thing that you never do that you need to do today as you're watching me right now. You need to remember one, give your life to Christ. And if you are in Christ, there is no failure. And when you are in Christ, you need to change your mindset from failure mindset to success mindset. Success mindset is the original intention and purpose of God for your life. Whether you are walking in the direction because you are being order of the Lord, you are being order of the Lord, you are walking in the truth, God will guide you to all truth and it will lead to success in the end. There is no failure in God. Somebody say an idea. So when Christ came into the boat of Peter, the whole atmosphere changed. Peter, now you shout. Some of you, you belong to some circles of gossipers, rumormongers, people who are going about to crush anything that they see. Hallelujah. The fact I saw last week, the fact that there is a synagogue of the devil does not mean that there is no synagogue of God. We have people who are just a copycat. And we have people who are original, who God called for certain assignment. So don't put everybody all together and begin to lash on any church that you see, on any preacher that you see. There are still preachers, and there are still church, and there are still believers. There are still people who worship God. Don't begin to take decisions because people are doing this and saying that. We don't listen to what people say. We listen to the word of God. The word of God is, if you are living right, let your life exhibit it. By their fruit, we shall know them. Somebody say amen. Not everybody is a thief. Not everybody is starting money from nobody. Not everybody is giving people fake, fake prophecy. We have people who never did that. And they are, they are still intact. The only problem is that people want lies. People want people to cook up something for them. People want people to create a calf like Aaron for them to worship. They don't want to go in the way, for, in the way of Moses who has to fast, who has to you know, be in the presence of God so that he can 
carry certain glory upon his life. We don't want to go through all of those processes. We want, we want to hand me down kind of power, hand me down kind of business, hand me down everything. We don't want to do anything on our own part. And when we fail, our faith disappointment, we, we, we see somebody to blame somewhere. Yeah. You are accountable to your life. And that is why when the, when the talent was distributed, they all were rewarded. Hallelujah. God wants for you to multiply in your talent and in your gift. And you need to focus on that and don't be, don't be distracted with all of those wind of doctrine. And some people who are just being happy for nothing. We want to excite you into, you know, some people can come to you and, and just be excited and introduce certain ministry or certain business and certain product to you. They are excited about it, even though it is nothing, even though it's not productive, but they are just being excited. Don't let their excitement to derange you and distract you to the point that you start following them like a follower. And uh, you need to follow lights. Somebody is saying that there. You need to follow what is right. He's a person. Be an imitator of me as I am an imitator of Christ. Hallelujah. So you are not a follower when you are imitating somebody who is imitating Christ. Somebody is saying that there. Now, let me go to this subject again. He launched out. And what will happen is that the Bible says he enclosed with not breaking and both seeking breakthrough. When does that happen? When he surrender his life. When he surrender his boat. When he surrender the aspect of his life that is not working. Then God turn it around. Because he is the same Lord, the Lord Lord, and the heavy Lord. Whatever he says goes. If he tells that there is what there is fish at the other side of the boat. Because he said it. The fish will be there. When you listen to the you know, prophetic directions of God, you will know that you will have failure in your life. Your life will be going through successions of success in the name of Jesus. Now, God doesn't just want for us to remain in one position. He wants to advance us. He wants to progress us. So when this thing happened, Peter then understood how to be submitted to things that is beyond him. Hallelujah. It's beyond him to see that a man could direct him. The Holy Ghost can direct you. Hallelujah. And you are enclosed with this breakthrough, with this success. Now, if that happens at the point in time when Christ said, Anybody go. Peter said, I'm going nowhere because there is something here. You are the El Shaddai, the Lord, that is more than enough. Where will you go? Hallelujah. You have the word in your mouth. When you speak it, it comes to pass. Some of you are in the wrong circle. You are in the wrong place. This year, I want you to change direction and break yourself free from the circles of defeat and failure to the circles of success and increase and breakthrough for your life. I redirect your path this year. That your path will not go to the path of failure or down the hill. That your path is going upward success in God. I'm not preaching to you today that even though when you are in Christ, we don't experience tribulation. It's part of those things. But when we continually surrendering those aspects to God, then God will by himself bring success story in the midst of your storm. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm going to go on a break today. And when I come back, the studio lines will be open and you can call for your prayer. But I come to announce to you today that your life can start when you change your mindset, that your life can start on the path of success today. If you want to change your mindset about God, about what God can do according to His word, you will not have failure. You will not have defeat. You are born to conquer. You are not a conqueror. God has never created any failure. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things pass away. You are new. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I see you succeeding in all that you set your hands to do. In Jesus' name, I pray. I'll be right back. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. You are welcome back to Born to Conquer, the ministry brought to you life to revolutionize your mind and to revolutionize your world. I'm going to pray with you today and the studio lines will be open and I want you to call for prayers. 
Hallelujah. I want to agree with you today by prayer of agreement that two of you shall touch anything on earth, it shall be done. I want to agree with you in any kinds of cycles that you find yourself. I want to agree with you to break free from that into success cycle in the name of Jesus because your life is going somewhere. God had already pronounced the time when he created us. He said we should be fruitful, multiply, subdue. Hallelujah. Replenish and have dominion. That is the prayer of God that cannot be changed. It's ever powerful. Anytime when you embrace that, success and dominion is your destination. Hallelujah. I don't come to you to preach about failure. I don't preach, come to you to preach about poverty. God has designed you to succeed in all that you set your hands to do and to excel in all that you put your hands to do. That is the mandate of heaven for your life. And if that is not happening to you today, I want to agree with you because cycles have to be broken. There are demonic projections into people's life that made them to start going through certain perpetual cycles of failure and defeat. Some of you today, you might be going through all kinds of labor and pains, but it could be a training ground. Some of you today, you might think that you are barren. Every year, you are expecting that you have your baby. There is no barrenness because he already declared that you should be fruitful. So it's an occasion for you to call unto heaven. Today, I say one thing that is missing in Peter's life is to surrender that aspect to God. Hallelujah. One thing might be missing in your life. You may be a child of God. Maybe you are not putting, maybe you are not reading the word. Maybe you are not praying. Maybe you are not standing upon God's promises. Maybe you are not fasting. Maybe you are not fellowshipping with other churches or with your, with your, you, you know, with your brethren. Because, you see, these days, people say church is nothing. They can as well do things in their house. You are violating the principle. If you love Christ, you will be in his church. He said, I will build my church and the gate of hell shall not prevail. He said, don't forsake the assembly the church. Don't forsake it. If you love God, you will not forsake. You will not, because see, that is the powerhouse that powers you. If you don't receive power from the powerhouse, how are you going to sustain yourself? Hello, viewers, what do you want the Lord to do for you? Hello? 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 Yes, yeah, speak up. I can hear you. I'm having spots on my lips. And doctor says it's cancer. Can you pray for my lips and also for my tongue? There are some white spots on my tongue and throat. Are you talking about your son that had cancer? Huh? Who will have the cancer? Is it your son or you? You can't hear me. Please repeat yourself again for the prayer points. Can you pray for me, please? All right. So I should pray for you because of cancer, yeah? Ah. Uh, Is that correct? Rosabel. Let me pray with you. Father God, I thank you. I raise and lift up your daughter, Rosabel, before your throne room of grace. I welcome the hands of heaven upon your life. By the powers of the blood of Jesus Christ, I flush out everything that are not meant to be part of you. You are the temple of God. Therefore, it cannot cohabit with sickness or with cancer. Therefore, I, I, I speak against that cancer to come out of your body right now. In the name of Jesus, I neutralize the power and the effect of cancer in your life by the pass of the blood. Receive your healing right now in Jesus' name. Amen. I, I, I see the power of God moving from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet and that cancer will totally dry up as I'm speaking to you because heaven is endorsing this prayer right now in Jesus name I pray the Lord bless you you call me so that I can give you some, some supernatural direction when, you, when this program is over God bless you, thank you for calling Amen I want to pray with the global world concerning breaking away from the spirit of failure or the burden or the yoke of failure into your blessing, into the blessings of God that God ordained from the foundations of the world. 
in Jesus' name. Father God, I lift up everyone before that are watching me around the world. I lift you up before the throne room of grace. I welcome the hands of heaven upon your life to come through into the real areas of your weakness and the area that is that needed to be delivered before things start happening. I present every one of you before the throne room of grace right now. I stand in the gap with Christ, who is the great intercessor, who is making intercession. Hallelujah. For us, I join my faith with Christ and with you today that I see you from the cycles of failure into the cycles of success. In the name of Jesus, I bind every, every patterns and every mindset that does not conform to the original mandate of God for your life. I welcome a new oil upon your life that energizes you and quicken you from the place of weakness to the place of strength. In the name of Jesus, I pray for a new anointing, new oil upon your life that sustain you even right now, even in your business or in your marriage or in your calling, that nothing shifts you away in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that you become unshakable, unmovable, as Christ is sustaining you against every spirit of failure and every body of yoke in the name of Jesus. I welcome the hammers of the Holy Ghost to smash and destroy every projection from the pit of hell that is programming failure into your path. I cancel that steps. I cancel that mindset. I cancel that projection over your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. I see you blessed. I see you going forward. I see God coming into your business, turning things around to the glory of God in the name of Jesus. I see you going forward. I see you having a net breaking and boat sinking breakthrough today in your business and in your ministry and in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. You will no longer know any failure. I release a new anointing of endurance and supernatural inner fortitude to sustain you in your moment of trial in the name of Jesus. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. The Lord delivered them out of them all. I release the anointing and the grace of deliverance upon your life. I release the spirit of deliverance upon your life from the spirit of giving up and from the attack that is coming from the pit of hell against your life, against your marriage, against your business, against your ministry in the name of Jesus. Oh, some of you here, you got a qualification and you've been applying for a job and it seems that it has been so difficult and all that you have seen is failure and you know, all these years. I'm speaking to you and there's a new order in the realms of the spirit in the name of Jesus as a prophet speaking to you right now, I make a declaration in the name of Jesus that the next time when you launch out, the next time when you apply, you shall be employed in the name of Jesus. I release this grace upon your life that you will not be declined, you will not be de denied, and you will not be delayed. God will release into your life a new favor that will launch you into your the job of your heart desire in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you have been going through the cycles of pains of marital uh, in the areas of... Um, you know, barrenness and stuff like that. You'll be going through all of that. And I'm speaking to you today that God will de God who declare you fruitful from the beginning. Because his word, he never changed. His word, he's lifted up above his name. I declare that same fruitfulness of, upon your life right now in the name of Jesus. I break the bad bones of barrenness out of your life in Jesus' name. Every cycles of failure and miscarriages and all of that that is going on in your life, I command a stop to that miscarriage miscarriages in the name of Jesus. It shall no longer repeat itself. Affliction will not repeat itself the second time in your life in the name of Jesus. Some of you, you have been going through some marital problem. You have been having a cash and fall kind of relationship. It's like you cannot hold one. It's like a cycle that is passed down from generational past that in this kind of family, nobody can retain marriage. But I break it today 
in the name of Jesus, by the finger of God, I declare you and release you into your marital destiny of fruitfulness, of sustainability in the name of Jesus. You will sustain that relationship. Every program loss that is being programmed from the pit of head to say that you will fail in your marital life, I cancel that thought and that mindset and that projection. It will no longer have effect in your life and destiny and your relationship from this moment. Oh Lord, in Jesus' name, I'm praying this to you because God wants for me to do that. I had a revelation of someone. You are doing a job that is not yours and you are laboring. You are burdening some. Hallelujah. You are doing a work that and you are exerting and dissipating your energy over this particular job. In fact, you are fighting all you can to retain this particular job. Today, I pray that the scale will be off from your eyes. That you will see where you are and where God is taking you. I release a new revelation, a new mindset that breaks you free from this mindset of bodysome and labor under pressure. I cast you over your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is, my God, this is the word of God for you today that I'm going to read for you. Hallelujah. It's very important because the Bible made us to understand that he doesn't want for us to be burdensome. He wants for us to come to him. He wants for us those who are heavy lady, who are laboring on that bodies of yoke. God wants to deliver you. Let me read these scriptures to you in the book of Psalm 55 verse 22. It says, cast your burden unto the Lord and he shall sustain you and he shall not permit the righteous to be moved. He will not permit the righteous to be moved. I don't care. I don't know what is shaking you and what is moving you. Maybe your status, maybe your immigration status. The Bible says he never permits anything to move you. You became unshakable and unmovable in the name of Jesus. Nothing moves you from the place of your work. Nothing moves you from the place of your assignment. Nothing moves you in your marriage. And let your hair break loose. They will not be able to stand. They will become a shaft before the wind. In the name of Jesus, every projection from the pit of hair that want to move you from the place of your prosperity, I stand against it in the name of Jesus by the finger of God and I said, it shall not stand stand, neither shall it come to pass. In the name of Jesus Christ. Matthew 11 verse 28 to 30. It says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me or from me. I am gentle and lonely in heart, and I will give you rest. I will give rest to your soul. God wants for you to come to the finished work the rest in Christ, where Christ has paid all the price through his blood. He wants for you to take your strength from there. Those who took their strength in Christ, their rest in Christ, they always rise up to prosper in all that they set their hands to do. And I release that same grace upon your life in the name of Jesus from this moment. You shall begin to see, you shall begin to see the scale of bodysom, of labor, dissipating your energy on something that will not be productive. It's out of your life, out of your eyes, out of your mind in the name of Jesus. I set you on a course of heaven concerning your life as you walk through that path my God, you shall begin to succeed in the name of Jesus. But the Bible says, and Simon took the oil and anointed Saul, and he began to direct what will happen as he's walking along that course. That same oil is upon your life as I'm speaking to you, that is directing you to succeed in all that you set your hands to do in the name of Jesus. Along the way of your journey, you will encounter success. You will encounter the right people to come into your life. See, Peter got the right team, the Sebedees. He called them, he beckoned on them to come to him. Hallelujah. The right people, the right company that, that, will, that will synergize you and make you to be productive and push your life to another level. As they are coming to him, their boat is also, you know, being, being, their, their boat is also seeking of blessing. You cannot be connected to the right people, to the right, you know, association and, and, and be less. You will be going up and that is what happened to 
the Sedevis, when they came together as a team, the Bible said every one of them had their boats filled with fishes in the name of Jesus. I see that happen to you as you join, you know, with Christ, as you form relationship with Christ today, as you join yourself up with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, that energy will be, will be released upon your life. Yoke of poverty will be broken. Yoke of failure will be broken out of your life. The anointing of God will go before you in the name of Jesus and you will succeed in all that you set your hands to do in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. First Peter said, first, first Peter chapter 5, verse 6 and 7, he said, Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hands of God, that he may exhort you in due season, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. He cares for you. You know, of all of the people, he saw your pains. He saw the pains of Peter. He came at the right time to rescue Peter from toiling all night. He was the one that come to wipe away tears. He was the one that come to wipe away, you know, toys from your eyes. He wants to distribute miracles into your life. So when you gave your life to Christ, your life will never be the same. Burdens of life, yoke of life will be broken out of your life and your life will be continually going through the successions of breakthrough and success in Jesus' name. Before I finish today to cap it up is that God wants to advance you. He doesn't want for you to just be a, a fisherman. He wants for you to be cashing men, new frontier, new invention, new, new territory, taking territory, breaking free from the cycles of failure and moving forward in life. I see that to be your experience today. In Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah. There is no failure. Hallelujah. In Christ. And anyone that is in Christ they are meant to succeed. Things is subject to change when you are in Christ. Amen. Um, we are out of time, not out of the world. And we know that we can pray all through here, but the time is gone. I want to use this opportunity this Saturday between 6 o'clock and 9 o'clock I'm inviting you to come and pray over the life of your children. We call it praying parent gathering. It's very important you as parents, you took it upon yourself as part of your responsibility to jealously wash over the life of your children in the place of prayer. It's not just praying for our biological children. We are also praying for our spiritual children around the world. Because there are this spirit of rebellion, the prince of the past of the air, that is now working on the children of disobedience, and there are a whole lot of things going on in the life of our children. And I, I just want for us to transgenerate blessing into the life of our children. So when we gather to pray, my God, something unusual happened because testimony has been going on to the glory of God for people who came to gather with us. This is happening at number one C Woolish New Road. It's just one minute walk away from Woolish Arsenal Station. The phone number is, is there. Call for direction. Come on Saturday, this Saturday, this weekend, between 6 o'clock and 9 o'clock. Your life and the life of your children will never be the same. Also, I want for you to support us here because this, this, this big God's business requires support from you. I want for you to support us in this mission. And I want for you to watch it with us on Sunday between 12 and 2 every Sunday. The Lord bless you. I'm very happy to come your way and I'll be on your way next week between 4 and 5. The Lord bless you. Be blessed. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you.